friends, once again, I can't bring you good news today as the situation has worsened even further. Overnight, there were significant changes along the front line and they have been confirmed. Overall, the situation along the entire front line has become even more tense as the occupiers have deployed a large number of troops in the Zaporizhia direction. Additionally, the start of another round of military exercises on the border between Belarus and Ukraine is also concerning. And let's start the frontline situation over you right away with the Avdiivka direction. Despite the third assault brigade claiming successes in the area of the road yesterday, unfortunately, today the situation has been overturned and the occupiers have pushed back our units with a significant number of troops. Now the road has definitely come under their control. Moreover, a large number of troops continue to move both towards Avdiivka and to cut off the remaining roads to Avdiivka. Their confirmed advancement amounted to 800 meters, and it's reported that they have already raised their flag at the entrance to Avdiivka to underline their successes. The NP has no questions about this video, our fighters hoisted the Russian flag near the Avdiivka steel. Just a month ago, she had a selfie from a narcofuhrer. Ours are chasing the Koklamraz to each other raised fist believe in the Russian warrior and help ours as much as you can. Also, as I mentioned, from the southern side, as expected, the Ukrainian forces couldn't hold this front line for long, and it was confirmed yesterday that they had to retreat. Thus, the Russian advancement amounted to 1 km and 400 meters in length and 1 km and 900 meters in width. Moreover, the offensive actions continue here, and the Russians have also raised the Russian flag in this area. The Ukrainian military withdrew from the Zenit enclave in the south of Avdiivka, which has been almost surrounded by the enemy in recent days. The orcs publish footage of control over the place. Similarly, uh, as you can see, in the private sector from the southern side of Avdiivka, the occupiers are managing to advance further. According to the latest information, Battles are already taking place on Nikrasova Street, approximately 800 meters from the front line. Uh, currently, this area is likely within the gray zone, and the Ukrainian armed forces continue to engage the occupiers there. Uh, however, considering the significant concentration of enemy forces, they steadily advance towards the city and take positions in private houses. So, unfortunately, reinforcements didn't yield significant results and the occupiers continue to move forward. Uh, this is largely because the occupiers have a much larger supply of ammunition. So, the entire territory is under constant shelling, and every meter of land is being destroyed. Therefore, it's practically impossible for the Ukrainian armed forces to maintain any positions. Consequently, they are forced to retreat, as reported by the Ukrainian armed forces on site. Today, there are some bloody assaults in Avdiivka, groups of 50 are being pushed, this did not even happen in Bakhmut. They are trying to put pressure in the direction of Lastikine and squeeze through the forest to the west of Avdiivka. This indicates that after Bakhmut, 
they have gathered even more results and now the assaults have become even stronger. Moreover, today the occupiers are simply trying to demonstrate their strength in all directions and show that they still have a significant amount of reserves with no signs of running out anytime soon. So just look at the direction of Marinka. Several groups are actively storming Grigorivka, breaking through to the village, and the situation there is very challenging. The Ukrainian armed forces are doing everything to maintain defense. So, battles for the outskirts of Krasnohorivka also continue, and Novomikhailivka is being stormed relentlessly every day, with a large number of shelling incidents as well. However, our fighters are holding the front line unchanged. In the Vuhlidar direction, the intensity has also ceased. Attacks have resumed on Staromayorske and today battles are again raging in the direction of Zolotaniva. Practically all settlements near the front line are being shelled. In the Zaporizhia direction, attacks have ceased for now. Their preparation for large-scale assaults is likely underway. So even the Ukrainian side has announced that the Russians have deployed more troops and equipment here than in the Avdiivka direction. So the Ukrainian forces are, of course, also preparing. But there is concern about uh, ensuring that the command makes the right decisions. The accumulation of enemy forces in the direction of Robotine was noticed more than two weeks ago. The defense forces see everything. The main thing is that the right decisions are made at the command level. Overall, it seems that things will heat up soon in this direction as well. A counteroffensive from the Russian side is now expected. In the Kherson direction. Shalin and offensive actions on the village of Krynki continued. However, the Russians haven't achieved any success here either, and the front line remains unchanged. So the occupiers report that their units are mutinying and refusing to participate in the assault. Today, our enemy bridgehead in the village of Krynki was not stormed, they were treated with artillery and mortars. Aviation did not work. One of the reasons why our people have given up on assaults today is the fatigue of the fighters and their understanding of the futility of these assaults, which has almost caused a riot today. Yes, today, at the request of Teplinsky, a flag was installed on the water tower, but this is a kind of PR victory. The only hope is that Teplinsky will soon be removed, as today they were removed for pro. Commander of the Black Sea Fleet uh, however, there is no confirmation that they have raised the Russian flag instead of the Ukrainian one. Uh, the situation today in the Bakhmut direction is very complex. Once again, this direction demonstrates that the Russians have a significant number of reserves and they aim to advance towards Chasivyar. Attacks are taking place in the vicinity of Bogdanivka, near Ivanivska, Klishivka, and even Andreevka. Particularly near Ivanivska, the Russians are indeed making progress, so they have approached the village closely. However, consolidating their positions there is challenging due to extensive destruction. Therefore, the front line remains unchanged today, but fighting is occurring practically on the outskirts of the city. Additionally, a significant number of shelling continues. In the severs direction, 
Attacks uh, have begun today on the village of Veselin, while shelling continues in Pilohorivka. Uh, the activity here is not as intense, so the Ukrainian forces repel all attacks and the front line remains unchanged. Uh, however, this situation is very challenging in the direction of Krimina. The occupies heavily shelled a small section of the front near the river from where they aim to press the Ukrainian forces. So they are also actively storming positions near the villages of Terny and Yampolivka. There have been no changes along the front line over the day, but fighting continues. In the Svatova area, there is a lull. So uh, this is the only direction where there are no active combat actions. In the Kupinsk direction, shelling continues, and the Russians are attempting to storm Ivanivka in an effort to dislodge our units from the village. However, they haven't achieved success over the day and the front line remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Volodin, the chairman of the Russian parliament, says uh, that Americans want to have Putin as their president. Критика нападки со стороны наших недругов, врагов Вашингтона, Брюсселя на Путина. Как вы думаете, почему? Они понимают, что Россия с Путиным будет развиваться. Они прекрасно понимают, что наша страна с ним будет сильной. И поэтому, невзирая на то, что партия выдвинула своих кандидатов, мы должны быть выше партийных интересов. Нам надо думать о стране. Он имеет опыт. Он показал за время нахождения в должности, что может решать самые тяжелые задачи. Нам надо ценить то, что Путин создал обстановку гласности, соревновательности, конкуренции. И это сильная сторона нашей политической системы. Но вместе с этим, в нынешней ситуации, нам надо всем объединиться вокруг Владимира Владимировича Путина. Если посмотреть, что пишут в Америке, они хотели бы, чтобы у них президентом был Путин. Но у них нет. Он у нас. А у них Байден. Видите? Наказание им. And that's all for me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.